Hi, my name is Stephen Shane, the 3D Professor, and this is the 3D Professor's Lab. We're going to use Autodesk Inventor to create a sponge holder that fills a few needs. I know, a sponge holder professor, really? So the backstory here is that I've been in the market for a sponge holder for my kitchen sink. And I have a few specific thoughts on what I wanted. I was looking for something that elevated the sponge and allowed it to dry, but didn't take up space inside my sink. Now, I don't mind it hanging over a little bit, but I wanted something uh, that was specific. So I did what everybody else does. I went to the internet and I decided to search. Well, after what seemed like hours of searching and looking at hundreds of web pages, I didn't find a thing. So what did I do? I pulled out my trusty Autodesk Inventor and began to design the sponge holder that met my needs. What follows is a step-by-step -step account of the creation of that sponge holder. I hope you enjoy. I'll begin by creating a new part. The first sketch will be the outline of the side profile on the YZ plane. Starting at the origin and working my way around, I'll create the side profile. First is the small lip. Then I'll go over a little up at an angle, then to the right, straight up, down to the left, then the final line completing the shape. I'll add a parallel constraint, clicking on the left edge of the lip, then the right edge, then add additional dimensions to constrain the sketch. For the width of the lip, I'll add a dimension and set the value to 0.375 inches. Add an angle to the lip and set that to 70 degrees. Set the length of the tray to 3 inches and the height of the tray to 1.75 inches. Adding a dimension of 0.25 inches for the height of the base and 0.4 inches from the base to the corner of the lip. This completes the shape and I can finish the sketch. Clicking Extrude, I can extrude the main profile 5 inches. This will set the tray wide enough for the sponge that I use. The next profile will be used to create the drain spout of the tray. I'll create a new sketch on the XZ plane. Using project geometry, I'll click on the bottom surface to project into the sketch. I'll turn on slice graphics to view the plane of the sketch. Here, I will add a rectangle in the middle. then a line going from the upper left corner of the rectangle to the left edge, then a line on the other side to the right edge. Adding some dimensions, I'll set the width of the rectangle to 0.75 inches, then an offset from the left edge to center it. Setting the dimension to a formula using parameters will allow me to modify this later on and not have to recenter the rectangle. Click the Manage tab, Parameters. I can find a parameter for the extrusion amount in Extrusion 1, D6. So the formula will be D6 minus D8, the 0.75 inch dimension, divided by 2 and I'll place the D0 minus D2 in parentheses. Then, adding an angle of 10 degrees for the left line, 
and another dimension to the right side using the same angle as the left. This set of shapes will be used to create an intersection with the side profile. Finishing the sketch, I'll add another extrusion. Here, I'll select the profiles I want to use, change the Boolean to Intersect, then drag the handle up through the base shape, then click OK. That gives me a general shape. Now I want to create the spout and the inset where the sponge will sit. I'll create a new sketch on the front of the lip for the drain spout. Here, I'm going to create a large rectangle, but keep the left and the right side inside the spout. I'll add a dimension between the left side and the left edge of the spout, setting the dimension to 0.1 inches. Then I'll add a dimension to the other side and reference the first dimension, setting it to 0.1 inches as well. Selecting Extrude, and then the rectangle, I'll set the distance to 0.275 inches, set the direction to flipped, and change the boolean to cut. Next, I'm going to create another sketch, this time on the top of the sponge holder to make the inset. I'll go ahead and project the top surface. Then, click the offset tool and offset the projected outline by 0.1 inches. And I'll right click and click OK. Then I'll add a few additional lines that will complete my profile for the top inset. By the spout, I'll add a line on the left side that is collinear with the newly offset inner edge. Then I'll do the same on the right side adding a line collinear to the inside edge. Next, I'll add a line connecting the projected edges on the inside of the front of the spout, creating a closed profile I can use. I'll press Escape to get out of line mode, zooming out and moving to the top of the sketch. I'll click Extend, then click the left vertical line and then the right vertical line, extending them to the projected edge and pressing Escape. Lastly, I'll select the horizontal line and press Delete to remove it. Finish the sketch, then click Extrude and select the three profiles needed for the complete inset extrusion. I'll change the direction to Flipped set the distance to 0.2 inches, and change the Boolean to Cut, then click OK. Before adding the back, I need to adjust the angle of the inset. I don't want it to be quite so steep. From the Modify panel, I'll click Direct. I want to select the face of the inset in the middle of the front edge of the spout. That way the pivot will be based on that point. In the pop-up toolbar, click Rotate and begin to rotate around the front edge. Once I see a type in box, I'll set the value to negative 8 and click the plus to accept the rotation. Then I can click the red X to close the direct manipulation toolbar. Now I want to add the back wall by creating a sketch on the side of Extrusion 1. I'm going to project the geometry of that face into the current sketch. Once the face has been projected, I'll draw a line starting at the lower right, out to the right about 0.1 inches, then straight up as in line with the top edge as possible. then the upper right corner. And to close the loop, I'll create a line to connect the start and the end points. 
I'll add a collinear constraint from the original projected top edge to the short one that I drew. Then I'll add a dimension from the projected right edge to the new edge, setting the value to 0.1 inch. Then I'll finish the sketch. Again, selecting Extrude, I'll click on the newly created profile, change the direction to Flipped, set the distance to D6 in order to use the extrusion distance in Extrusion 1. Leave the Boolean at Join, then click OK. The next step is to add a whole bunch of fillets and one chamfer. Now I know I could have done some of this in the extrusions and avoided this series of steps, but I like to keep my fillets separate from my profiles if I can avoid it. It allows me to have a little more flexibility in my design options. I'll begin by filleting the edge of the spout. Clicking Fillet, I'll select the edge at the corner inside the spout and set the fillet value to 0.35 inches and click Apply. To see more of what's happening, I can expand the fillet dialog box instead of using the pop-up toolbar. But it doesn't matter which one you use, they do the same thing. Next, I'll select the two outer corner edges of the spout, the two front inner corners of the inset, and the two back inner corners of the inset, setting the value to 0.35 inches and click Apply. By clicking Apply, I can continue adding fillets without closing the fillet dialog box. Now I'll work my way from the front to the back selecting the two front edges of the spout and setting the radius to 0.1 inches. Again, clicking Apply. I'll select the two upper corners of the spout, set the radius to 0.45 inches and click Apply. Then I'll select the inside edges at the top of the spout and the outer edges at the front of extrusion one and the back of extrusion 1. Leaving the radius at 0.45, I'll click Apply. The last fillet is for the dish inset. I'll go ahead and select the inside edge of the inset. This will string together all of the edges that make up this profile. At the current value, I get an error. I'll change the radius to 0.2 inches. Then click OK to close the tool. Since I'm 3D printing this, I want to chamfer the inside bottom corner of the spout instead of fillet it. It just makes it easier to print. I'll rotate my view around so I can see the bottom. Then I'll click Chamfer and select the inside edge of the spout. Set the value to 0.1 inch and click OK. The next sketch will be for the ribs that will be used to keep the sponge off the bottom and allow it to dry. My thought is that I want to have minimum contact with the sponge in the ribs. So these ribs will be narrow and will taper at the top. I'll start a new sketch on the inner face of the inset. I'm going to select the rectangle tool and draw five tall but narrow rectangles. I'll start on the left and draw the first one, beginning at the upper left and ending at the lower right, about 0.1 inches in width. I'll create the second rectangle, starting at the upper left to the right of the first, then finishing down and to the right, about 0.1 inches. I'm not going to worry about dimensions right now, as I'll add those when I'm done. creating the third rectangle to the right of the second, starting in the upper left and finishing in the lower right. Creating the fourth rectangle, starting in the upper left and finishing in the lower right. And lastly, creating the fifth rectangle, starting in the upper left and finishing in the lower right. Then pressing escape to end rectangle creation. 
First, I'll set the dimension between each rectangle. This will help avoid overlapping rectangles when I dimension the rectangle width. I'll set the dimension between the first rectangle and the second, leaving the value at the default. I'll set all the values once I've added all the dimensions. I'll add the dimension between the second and the third, leaving it at the default. Then add the dimension between the third and the fourth, leaving it at the default. Then add the dimension between the fourth and the fifth. This time, instead of leaving the dimension at the default, I'll select the first dimension and press Enter. I'll double click the third dimension and set its value to the first dimension and press Enter. I'll do the same thing for the second dimension and press Enter. This will use the first dimension to set the distance between all the rectangles. I'll do the same thing for the rectangle width. Selecting the dimension tool, I'll dimension the width of the rectangles first. Clicking the top edge of the most left rectangle, I'll set the value to 0.1 inches. I'll select the top edge of the second rectangle, set its value to the first rectangle's width dimension. I'll select the top edge of the third rectangle, set its value to the first rectangle's width dimension. I'll select the top edge of the fourth rectangle, set its value to the first rectangle's width dimension. Then I'll select the top edge of the fifth rectangle and set its value to the first rectangle's width dimension. I'll double click the dimensions between the first and second rectangles and set the value to 0.32 inches. That will set both the width and distance between each of the ribs. Next, I'm going to use a collinear constraint on the top edges of the five rectangles. I'll select the collinear constraint Select the top edge of the first rectangle, then select the top edge of the second rectangle. Do the same for the first rectangle and the third rectangle, the first rectangle and the fourth rectangle, and the first rectangle and the fifth rectangle. Depending on how I created the rectangles, I may already have this constraint added by default. If a warning shows up, I can close it and move on. Once the edges are all constrained, I'll add a dimension from the top edge of the rectangle to the top edge of the sponge holder, setting the dimension value to 0.5 inches. I'll pan down to the bottom edges of the ribs and start setting some dimensions between these edges. I'm going to start by adding a dimension between the fifth rectangle and the edge at the top of the spout setting that dimension value to 0.2 inches. Then I'll work my way from left to right, adding a dimension from the bottom edge of the first rectangle to the bottom edge of the second rectangle, setting the dimension value to 0.1 inches. I'll add a dimension from the bottom of the second rectangle to the bottom of the third rectangle, and set the value to the first vertical dimension. I'll do the same from the third to the fourth rectangle, setting the dimension to the first vertical dimension, and again from the fourth rectangle to the fifth rectangle, setting the dimension to the first vertical dimension. I'll finish the sketch. I'll click Extrude, then select the five rectangular profiles that will be used for the ribs. Set the distance to 0.5 inches and the taper value to 10 degrees. Then click OK. This will narrow the top and leave less surface area touching the sponge. Now I need to create a mirror plane that is at the middle of extrusion one. 
From the Work Features panel, I'll click Plane, then click on the side of Extrusion 1 and drag to the left. In the Distance Dimension, I'll type in negative D6 divided by 2 and press Enter. That will put this plane at half the Extrusion 1 distance. In the Pattern panel, I'll click Mirror, choose the extruded ribs as the feature, click the Mirror Plane option and click the Work Plane. The Mirror Preview shows the ribs on the other side, then I can click OK. There are only a few elements left to create, and those are the holes where I'll mount the small suction cups, and a small standoff that's going to be used as a way to level the sponge holder when the suction cups are in use. I'll start by creating a cavity in the back. I'll go ahead and create a new sketch and select the work plane in the middle of the part. Once the sketch is created, I can click Slice Graphics so I can see the plane I'm working on. I'm going to project geometry and project the bottom of the inset and the bottom of the part. Then I can click the line tool and draw a shape starting at the bottom right of the profile, about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom of the tray. Go straight up and click. Go down to the left and click. Go straight down and click. Then close the profile by clicking on the first point. Now I'll select Parallel Constraint. Click on the top line of the closed profile and make that parallel to the upper projected line. Then click on the bottom line of the profile and make that parallel to the bottom projected line. I'll add a dimension from the left edge of the closed profile to the right edge of the part and set the value to 1.75 inches. Then, I'll create a dimension between the top two edges and set the value to 0.125 inches. Do the same for the bottom edges, setting the value to 0.125 inches. Then I'll finish the sketch. Clicking Extrude, I'll select the inside profile that was just created. Set the direction to symmetric. Set the distance value to D6 minus 0.25. And change the Boolean to Cut, then click OK. The next step is to create the slots I can use to easily insert suction cups that I'm using. I'll first select the bottom plane, then click on Create Sketch from the pop-up toolbar. Since this is going to be a pattern of two, I'm only going to create one on the left side. I'll start out by creating a circle and placing it to the upper left. I'll add a couple of dimensions to place the circle and size it. From the center to the top is going to be one inch. Then, from the center to the left is also going to be one inch. Picking the circle, the diameter will be 0.14 inches. Then, I'm going to draw a line from the center of the circle straight up. Then, selecting the line, I'll make it a construction line. I'll draw two lines. One on the left side of the circle going up and just a little bit off to the left. And the other on the right side of the circle going up and to the right. Making sure the endpoints are coincident with both the circle and the top edge. I'll add a dimension between the two endpoints at the top, setting the distance to 0.3 inches. I'll add another dimension from the left side to the construction line, setting that dimension to be half the value of the first dimension. 
Then selecting the left line and the construction line, set the value to 5 degrees and select the right line and the construction line. Set the dimension to equal the first 5 degree value. That way, if you need to adjust anything, you just need to change one value. I'll finish the sketch. I'll click Extrude and the new wedge shapes as the profile. Set the direction to flipped. Set the distance to 2 and choose the bottom inside face. Change the boolean to cut and click OK. For the suction cup to fit, I need to remove some material from the inside around this extrusion. I'll select the inside bottom face and create a new sketch. I'll turn on Slice Graphics. From the Create panel, I'll project geometry and choose the inside face. This projects all the edges of the face. Then I'll offset the projected edges by 0.16 inches. Click Extend and I'll extend the left side of the opening to the front edge and the right side of the opening to the front edge. Then finish the sketch. I'll click Extrude again and select the profile around the opening, setting the direction to flipped, the distance to 0 0.065 inches, and Boolean set to cut, and click OK. To create a pattern in the Pattern Toolbar, click the Rectangular Pattern Tool. As the features, from the Model Browser, I'll select the two extrusions that make up the slot for the suction cup. I'll click the arrow for Direction 1 and choose one of the back horizontal edges. Then flip the direction if needed, set the count to 2, and set the distance to 3 inches, and click OK. Now I need to make a feature that will be used to level out the sponge holder when it's sitting on the sink. This is just going to be an extruded rectangle. I'll change my view so I can see the bottom. Click on the bottom face and choose Create Sketch from the pop-up toolbar. I'll create a rectangle a little bit over to the left and down towards the middle of the bottom. I'll add a few dimensions. I'll set the width of the rectangle to 0.25 inches and the height of the rectangle to 2 inches. I'll add the dimension from the right edge of the rectangle to the right edge of the bottom, setting the value to 2 inches. Then another dimension from the top of the rectangle to the top edge of the bottom, and set the dimension to open parentheses D6 minus the 2 inch dimension, close parentheses, divided by 2 and finish the sketch. I'll click Extrude. Make sure the rectangular profile is selected and set the distance to 0.17 inches and click OK. One final touch, because I'll be 3D printing this, I'm going to chamfer the extruded rectangle on the front and back. I'll click Chamfer. Choose the front and the back top edges and enter 0.17 into the distance value and click OK. This will help minimize the amount of support I need when printing. That completes the sponge holder. Now it's on to 3D printing. So let's go ahead and export this as an STL file. I'll go ahead and make sure this is saved. There's a couple of ways of getting a part out to an STL file. The way I like to work 
is simply exporting it using the STL file type. Although you can use the 3D print environment, it's a little more complicated. From the file menu, I'll choose Export CAD Format. At the bottom of the dialog is a Save As Type dropdown. Clicking the dropdown, notice there are quite a few formats to choose from. I'll pick STL. I'll click Preview to see what this is going to look like as an STL model. Once the preview shows, go ahead and turn on Show Facet Edges. This lets us preview how many polygons will be generated when we export the model. Since I like the current parameters, I'll click Close, and that will let me save the file. I'm going to print this on my Foldertech FT5 using a natural PETG filament. My program of choice for slicing is Simplify 3D. I'll switch over to Simplify 3D, click Import, and import the sponge holder. This comes in small, so I need to scale it up. Double-clicking the part opens the transform panel. I'll set the scale to 1000%, press Enter, then click Done. I'll go ahead and click Center and Arrange. This will place the sponge holder in the middle of the build plate. If your build plate is level, you can print wherever you want. There's no specific reason why you have to print in the middle. This is just a habit I've gotten into. Now I need to set up Support. I'll click Support Generation. I'm going to initially start with Automatic Placement option. I'll set the Support Pillar Resolution to a value of 1 millimeter the max overhang value to 55 degrees, and click Generate Automatic Supports. I'll look around and see if I like the way this automatically generated the supports. One thing that may be problematic as I look around, this is the way the ribs will be supported as well as the upper edge. I know from experience with my printer and using PETG, supports like that will not work as intended. To fix this, I'm going to go ahead and change the orientation so that it's printing from the bottom up. I can do this easily by pressing Ctrl L on the keyboard and clicking on the bottom face. I'll open up Support Generation again, leave everything at the default values, and click Generate Automatic Supports. Click Done and move on to the editing process. Now, since I used Simplify 3D last to print a part using PETG, the process is already set up. However, I do want to change some options with the support generation. Double clicking on the process opens the process settings. As you can see, I'm using the Foldertech FT5 PETG profile, albeit modified, not updated. On the layer tab, I'll print a primary layer height of 0.2 millimeters. I'm going to use six top solid layers, four bottom layers, and two perimeter shells. Switching over to the support tab, I'll leave the infill percentage set to 20%, and I have the dense support layer set to three at 100%. I found using PETG, that this works well when printing large flat areas on top of support, as we're doing here. All the other parameters I'll leave alone and close the process dialog. Before I do anything, I'll go ahead and save the factory file. I'll prepare this to print. Once the print preview appears, we can look and see how this is going to print. As I scroll through these layers, I know it's going to be fun to get the support off the bottom and to get the support out of the cavity in the back. But I also know that it will print much better in this orientation. I'll send this off to print.
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, click like, subscribe to my channel, and with your support, I hope to be doing more of these in the future. From the 3D Professor, it's time to go home.